I said um, predictions are dead. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, yeah. Uh, I and think I think you were right because <laughs> let's face it and we shouldn't laugh about this topic but the sort of biggest most horrible thing to happen no one would have ever have hoped would ever happen you know the kind of the thought of a, a, of a war a conflict in Europe is was unthinkable and the fact that it happened is, is, is disgustingly ghastly for the people that it's impacting but it's had a huge ripple effect and I think you know we can dance around that and I, we, we're certainly not making light of it but the reality is that and some of the other shocks that we were already sort of dealing with, the sort of, you know, the fallout from, um, you know, supply and demand, uh, mismatches because of COVID, uh, you know, staffing shortages, uh, and then energy price. You know, all these things are clearly creating the sort of inflationary pressure, which everyone is feeling. That's probably the consistent, you know, if we, if there's one prediction perhaps on the, on the, on the next episode we talk about, it, it's going to be, you know, how we deal with that inflationary pressure and how we continue to sort of innovate and operate going forwards. But that one thing we couldn't predict was that you know, and, I, and I do wonder whether we'll just keep getting that now will every year bring this really disruptive unexpected thing that we'll just have to respond to I actually I think the word of the year last year was perma crisis there we go of this year of, tw- of 2022 2022 oh, so and that right. is Adam Collins dictionary saying that right and now probably going to be overused yes perma crisis yeah um, but equally, we have some really interesting things happening uh, this year. So, um, Tom, I'd, I'd love to talk to you about some of your sort of technology highlights for 2022. But for me, one of the things I saw, which is really interesting, was the first real life applications of quantum technology. So, not necessarily quantum computing, but using quantum properties to secure networks, for example. So, mm-hmm. BT, I think, and Toshiba worked with Ernst & Young to create the first quantum secure network connection. Now it turns out actually that's quite limited. It's literally one piece of fibre, I think, that's between one place and another or something like that. It's a start. It's a start, yeah. but it's perhaps not the holy grail that perhaps people perhaps think it is. But it's interesting to start seeing these sort of very hyped, you know, talked about topics. Yeah, the, the quantum entanglement the encryption thing has been, it's going to be the next big thing for probably a decade, hasn't yeah. it? To see it actually, actually finally being realised. Yeah. yeah. 